what we bring to the table is, is sort of a, a different, um, outside the beltway, anti-conventional wisdom. I'm Tracy Oppenheimer for Reason TV. I'm here with Tom Bevin, one of the founders of Real Clear Politics, a site that launched in 2000 and is one of the leading news aggregators in policy and politics and includes writers from across the country, not to mention the globe. Tom, thanks for being here. You bet. What prompted you to launch Real Clear Politics? Back in the late 90s, <clears throat> it was the first time that you could get up and, and read what was written in the LA Times and the New York Times on the same day. All these publications were coming online and so we thought to ourselves, that was the genesis of the idea. How about creating a site for people like us who have a real passion for, for politics and for elections and create a space where we gathered all the best news, information, analysis, everything and put it in one place and became sort of a one-stop shop for political junkies. One of your more popular features is your polling on a lot of different races um, and, and you've averaged polls to get this data. Why, why do you think that's been so popular? And there's so much media out there now and there's so much more polling out there now uh, and partisans try and take those polls and, and spin them for their own benefit on a day-to-day -day basis. The averages have really become an indispensable way of, of sort of cutting through all the clutter and looking at, okay, right now, as we sit here today, this is where the race stands. They've had a great track record for accuracy, both at the, at the presidential level, but also in a lot of the uh, Senate races, governor's races. Pollsters in the end, they want to get it right too. I mean, they're running a business, as are we. We are very sort of particular about, you know, who's included in the average, and, and how those averages are sort of managed over time because, again, um, you know, the numbers are the numbers and we want that average to be held as sort of the gold standard um, across the board. You have conservative voices, liberal voices, libertarian voices. Now, do you think that the internet provides uh, more of a more content for people to have more discussion-based conversations? Or, you know, a lot of critics say that it sort of just reinforces people's own beliefs, and they go to sites where they they don't really have to look any further than what they subscribe to already. No, that's right. I mean, the, the internet is very polarized, and you will go to a site like National Review, for example. You can go there every day for five years and never see a liberal opinion, and you can go to the Nation magazine, uh, you know, every day for five years and not see a conservative opinion. And so that's one of the things that we we focus very much on and try very hard to to provide people with a, a variety of views across the political spectrum and also a variety of subject matter. I mean, we want it to be a site that's sort of all encompassing of the issues of the day. As much as there is this sort of you know, echo effect where you have people sort of reading only their favorite authors or reading only uh, articles that reinforce their, their own viewpoints. We do still hear a lot from folks who, who appreciate seeing two pundits, for example, arguing both sides of an issue. They like to read that and that's one of the things that, you know, the functions of the site is, I always say, it, it can serve as sort of a, a cheat sheet. You can spend five minutes there looking, just scanning the headlines, scanning the latest polls to see uh, you know, what's being written out there in a day, or you can spend five hours digging through and actually reading the internals of all the polls or reading through all these different arguments. And so I think people like uh, the way the site functions that way. Real Clear has really expanded to other areas outside of politics. You know, you have Real Clear Religion, Real Clear Books, Real Clear World. What kinds of things do you have to think about for your branding expansion and um, how, how do you measure your success? The idea really was based on the success of, of the politics site and the model that we have was to expand to different these different industries. I mean, there's really nothing, no um, industry that we can't expand our model to. And really, all the sites have, have been doing great because it's, it's based on sort of the, the model. If you like what we do at Real Clear Politics, um, you'll love, you know, you'll love what we do for all of these different, we call them verticals, um, brand extensions. And, um, and they've, they've been doing very well. You also generate a lot of information written specifically for Real Clear sites. It's not just a news aggregation anymore. Do you think, I mean, because people saw that you were sort of a trustworthy source for directing people to different news sites, that's allowed them to trust you more in terms of your individual content? I mean, we're still a very small operation relative to our competitors. I mean, we're competing against, obviously, the Washington Post, the New York Times, people who have, you know, 10, 20, 50, 100 times more resources than we do. So we approach that in a very specific way. We're not going to compete against the Washington Post or the wire services, for example, to break news stories necessarily. Um, what we bring to the table is, is sort of a, a different, um, outside the beltway, anti-conventional wisdom look at 
uh, whether it's you know whether it's an issue or whether it's the race itself. I mean, that's where we can really add value for our readers. Do you think it's still sites like the Washington Post and the New York Times that are breaking news, or is it, is it coming from new media and blogs? It's coming from all over the place. I mean, you, yeah, it's certainly coming from blogs. It's coming from from other sites, obviously like Politico. And one of the challenges that we're facing and that other folks are facing is that. Um, the way people are consuming information, certainly the younger generation. I mean, for example, the number of um, visits to, to real clear politics via mobile or via tablet is up, you know, by 20-fold over the last couple of years. And that's something that, you know, people aren't just coming to, sitting down at their computers and, and dialing up the website, right? They are, they're getting it on their phones, they're getting it on their iPads. And, and that's a challenge for us, um, you know, not only from a content production standpoint and transferring what we do what we, how we've always done our business into this new, you know, these new um, platforms, um, but also sort of as a business proposition from an advertising standpoint. Tom, thanks so much for talking to us. For Reason TV, I'm Tracy Oppenheimer.